Welcome back to another episode of Be Our Guest here on Musical Theater Radio. I am your host, as always, Jean-Paul Yovanoff. Now, when I started my radio station, I, I made it a mandate to support new works and their creators in the hopes that they could find a bigger audience and one day to be able to see them succeed and have a production. Well, one of those shows is doing that. They made it through the worst of the pandemic to the other side and have a production coming up very soon. Let's welcome to the show, the production team, the creators of Savage the Musical. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Awesome. Hello. Good to meet you all or re-meet some of you. Good to meet some of you new. So we're going to, we always start off the same. Uh, we get to know our guests real quick. So I'm going to usually ask for a 30 second bio, but everybody knows Nicolette and Linda already. So you two only get 15 seconds to tell everyone who you are. So Nicolette, let's start with you. Who's Nicolette in a quick 15 seconds? I am the creator, co-composer, lyricist, and co-writer of Savage the Musical, which is about my great grandmother, Wanda Savage. Awesome. That was perfect. <laughs> 11 seconds. Lyndall, can you top that in quality and quantity within the 15 seconds? I'll try. Um, I'm Lyndall Hart. I am the co-writer of the book for Savage the Musical, and I am so excited to be back on the show with you. Wonderful, wonderful. And if you want to learn more about them and the show, you can go to our original podcast that we did back in December. I can't believe it wasn't that it was that long ago. Um, you can learn about uh, Nicolette and Linda and the show and all that. But we have somebody new with us. We have Rachel Klein. Rachel, welcome. Hello, happy to be here. Thanks so Great. much, Paul. So you have thirty seconds because we don't know who you are. So in thirty seconds, who's Rachel? I'm a director and director choreographer. I'm based out of New York City. I specialize in the development of new musical theater. And um, I have been working with Nicola and Lindell on this, I want to say a couple of years now. Um, we've had a, a long process on and off with table reads, um, private readings that just the three of us going through um, testing the music, sort of rearranging things um, to create uh, what the current draft is, which is really exciting and is the production that the two of them are working on in Massachusetts currently. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm going to throw this out and whoever wants to answer it. Um, you know, so what's been going on since we last talked in December? What, how's the journey gone from then to the production that's coming up very soon? Um, well, we finished a complete rewrite on the script and um, we uh, have started this developmental production um, out here because we got an opportunity um, to um, be able to put this show up in this theater, which pre-pandemic we were planning on doing that. Um, and so now we've picked it up again and um, that's basically been the whole life as of the last, what, two months or something. <laughs> it's, it's been just like all about that and doing that um, in terms of the show. All right. And what kind of a rewrites and, and re, re changes did you make to it for, since the last time we talked? What, 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 what was the impetus for changing them? Lando. <laughs> okay, I'll answer that. Um, we, as we've gone through previous iterations of the script, we've made notes of things that we knew we wanted to change and we would put them sort of on the back burner so that we could finish current drafts that we, you know, the current draft that we were working on. And so with um, the pandemic, it offered us an opportunity to really examine the script and look at the things that we felt worked and the things that we thought needed to be reworked. And of course, not putting up in front of an audience that makes it a little more challenging. You have to use your imagination. And now is our opportunity to see the, the piece on its feet, to see what works, what needs to be tweaked or retooled or completely re-envisioned if need be. I don't think there's gonna be a ton of that at this point since we've been working on it. We're now in our sixth year of work on Savage. So I think that um, I think we're in pretty good shape in terms of having a first real production of it. Um, developmental production, obviously, but still 
a long way, I think, from where we were just two years ago. And it's really cool because like right before this production was going to start auditions and rehearsals again, um, since COVID stopped us mid rehearsals last time, um, right before that, uh, we kind of came up with this idea of a bookend ending that started the show and then ended the show. And that was kind of like a last minute thing. Um, and we shared it with Rachel. She thought it was a great idea. Um, and Rachel, you've been with us for five years <laughs> since 2019. What, I know it went my fast. <laughs> wow. Wait, um, is that five years, right? Nine. That's not five. That's not five years. That's three years. Oh, four. Coming up on four, three. four. Oh, sorry. I'm so bad at math. Oh my gosh. It's so no, it's, we, we, li we live through a pandemic, everybody. Time is a flat circle. What, a, what is time? Right. <laughs> what is I know time? it's true. I think we met you in 2018 though. So that sounds right. Up. That sounds yeah. right to me. So uh, let's take also, a second. How did you meet? That's, that's an interesting question. We met through a mutual friend who is um, a producer and a friend of the project that, um, you know, I, I know I, that Nicolette and Lindell um, were looking for a director. Um, I believe you guys were specifically looking for a female director, if mm -hmm. I'm correct. And I was recommended and um, we met and just hit it off because not only was I really attracted to the piece and the subject matter and the heroine, Wanda's story is incredible. Um, but also just personable response. I really clicked with both Nicolette and Lindell right away. And I think that we had a great symbiosis from the outset of our collaborative relationship. Uh, a piece like this is so, it's so interesting um, to, to kind of hop back into um, some of the changes and the rewrites that were being made. Also, since I've come on I come at it from a completely different perspective because it, you know, this is not my great grandmother, this is not my family, but this is an extraordinary person who lived an incredible life that was so rich with, and I mean, you could make a musical about a couple of years of Wanda Savage's life because she did so many things, and so you know, part of part of that as well as what I what I've been um, trying to help craft is what is the narrative from beginning to end within the context of the musical itself because with real people it's so hard because you want to keep everything and you know anything that um, the team is changing in order to condense timelines that sort of thing we want to we've been working with the utmost care to make sure that everything still is representative of the truth um, and how everything actually happened historically um, and also to just honor Nicolette's great great grandmother who was so ahead of her time such an icon and I'm really really excited to keep continuing the journey with you all fantastic so you as you mentioned you you've kind of reached a point where you need to put it in front of an audience right you can only yeah. write for so long and have it dance in your head but now you got to get it in front of real people how did how did you get to uh, be involved with this theater company that's uh, putting on the show so um, it's also a performing arts school. Mm -hmm. It's called Jaduk and it's in Turner's Falls, Massachusetts. And um, they have this brand new state of the art 540 seat theater. Um, they're friends of our family. And um, they kind of offered us this opportunity two years ago. And like I said, we we're in rehearsals and then COVID. <laughs> so um yeah, so that's kind of how we got that opportunity, and and they they were more than happy to give us that opportunity to put the show up. Um, they usually don't do new works. In fact, we are the first new work in that particular theater. Um, but they're big advocates of the arts. They are the only theater in the area that does musicals like Clockwork, like every quarter, um, kind of like a well-oiled machine. Um, so that's kind of how that came about. How was the process uh, for auditioning? Um, considering we were still in the we're still in the pandemic, but you know, auditioning is never easy. How did you go about you know getting the people, getting them out for the auditions and that sort of thing? Luckily, um, most of the cast from before wanted to still be in it. Um, I did have so because the theater is so huge. Um, I did have some auditions and got a handful of people who came. They were all excellent. I had a few people send me auditions, which was completely fine. Um, you know, monologue and a song of their choice. Um, 
and that's kind of how we did it. And, and honestly, because like I said, the theater is so huge. It wasn't like anyone was in close contact with each other when they came to audition. Um, everyone wore masks until they got on stage and then did their thing. Um, so yeah, it went really well, actually. But I was really blessed to have a lot of, the, especially my leads from before want to still be. And some of those leads are on the music that we have streaming. So that's cool too, because then like, and they're all local people. So the local people or even people outside of Massachusetts who have been listening to music can now come and see the people they've been hearing on stage. Very cool. Congratulations, first of all, on getting it back up and running. It's, it's never easy in the best of times <laughs> to get right. a show up and running. And, and you've done it at some of the worst of times. So, And I will say yes. like in in rehearsals, when the whole ensemble's there, everyone's in mass for rehearsals. So, um, and the mass mandate has just been pulled back out mm -hmm. here. So that's good. But um, in rehearsals, we were very conscious of that when we had just like three or four people on stage during the week when I was rehearsing with the leads, it wasn't so much that way unless they wanted to wear a mask. And I kind of left that up to them, but most of them wore masks. So I'm going to throw this one out to Rachel and Lindell. Um, you can both answer whoever wants to answer first. Now that you've seen it on stage and on its feet, with actual people, um, you know, performing this stuff. Is there anything that surprised you or um, you went, yes, they get it. Or you went, oh, I didn't get it. They, they you know, they've brought it out and, and now it makes sense. Is there any moments or, or scenes or anything like that? Well, right now um, in this particular production out in Massachusetts, um, Nicolette has spearheaded. She's taking the lead as the director of that particular project. So mm -hmm. I'm serving as a directing consultant. So this would be an amazing question to ask me next week <laughs> because I am going up there um, in uh, the, uh, the weekend after this coming weekend. So I'm going to see all of the magic that they've been creating. And um, that's the purpose um, of my of my journey. My journey to Massachusetts um, is to see sort of um, one of the early stages of a run through of the show in its entirety on its feet. Um, and then hopefully it can you know shed light to um, any show flow situations that may arise or um, add any helpful guidance or just tell Nicolette she did an awesome job. You know, I mean, there, I'm excited to see it. I'm really excited to see it. She was there for the reading too with the cast and she gave a lot of really good feedback for that. Lindell. Well, um, interestingly enough, uh, I will be seeing the work on on its feet for the first time when Rachel comes in. Um, I have consciously chosen to wait until the cast is really pretty solid with the material so that I get the full impact of what they're doing. And so then, you know, over the next few weeks before the show opens, I will be there more to you know, just to, to evaluate what's going on and to make notes and to see how, how things are going. And I don't, you know, I don't anticipate that we're gonna make any real changes um, until after this production, but I do wanna make notes as we go through the process because things will change week to week, I'm sure. And um, so these last few weeks of rehearsal will be when I actually come in and, and see things. Um, in three dimensions for the first time. He so did Nicolette, see some songs that were choreographed though. That's true. That. I have yeah. seen a couple of songs and some of the choreography and that's been very exciting to mm -hmm. be able to see those even just a few fragments of the show. So Nicolette, you're the only one of the three of you who's seen anything <laughs> so far. <laughs> yeah, um, I I will say that um, the in, the most interesting thing to me has been the feedback from the cast itself like when i'm um running a scene and then more than half of the cast is weeping the people who are acting the scene are weeping and yes there's tons of funny moments of the show and people laugh at those but i think the thing that's hit me the most is to see how much it's touching women especially and moms which is great because that's our demographic with this show it's an interesting feeling um I don't know how to put it into words. Like, like you're, you're proud. You're also like amazed that like the creation you've done or helped create has created 
this outpouring of emotion from people. Tell us a little bit more about maybe some of your actors, especially your lead, because, you know, that that the, the show obviously revolves around them. I'd love to learn about who they are and, and you know, how you found them. Um, so Samantha um, became a friend of mine and Lindell's through musical doing musicals with her. Um, and when we first started writing this, when I first started writing the music for this, um, her voice uh, and honestly, her her personality because she's kind of sassy uh, <laughs> uh, kind of like was like my muse for Wanda I was like oh yeah my grandmother my great-grandmother would totally be like that um, and so a lot of the stuff that I've written is like in lower keys because one I think we've had enough of the higher pitch leads in Broadway and I would love to hear the more fuller uh, grounded um, deeper darker tones that uh, there are female singers out there have. Um, and I wanted to highlight that because I envisioned my grandmother that way as being more grounded in her, in her tone. Um, and so Sam has that. And so it's been awesome. So when we did the two concerts in New York Musical Festival in 2019 and Rachel directed that, Sam was a part of that as well. Nice, nice. So when, where, and is this going up? It's April 1 through 3 at Jaduke Theater in Turner's Falls, Massachusetts. Um, we have a show at 7 o'clock on the 1st. On the 2nd, we have a 2 o'clock and a 7 o'clock. And on the 3rd, we have a 2 o'clock. Nice. And uh, where can people find information about this to buy tickets? At savagemusical.com. Very cool. Very cool. Is there anything you'd like to add um, about the show? Any of you, all three of you, um, and you know, where would you like to see it go from here? Broadway? <laughs> With a few stops along the way, Linda. With a few stops along the way, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking <laughs> ultimate destination, but um, but no, definitely, I, I am excited to see the next iteration of this, um, wherever that may be. And I, I just think the opportunity to see it develop and to be a part of that development is extraordinary. And I'm so happy to be a part of it. And so grateful to Nicolette for asking me if I wanted to join her on this process more than five years ago. Very cool. Well, again, congratulations to all three of you. Um, I hope everybody will head up, down, over, wherever you are in the, in the world to the, the theater to see the show i will say it's the cheapest you will ever get a ticket for this show again because we're planning to do a 54 below concert uh sometime this summer or fall we have a producer who's putting that together um and then we're going to do an industry reading and after that who knows so i don't think anyone's going to buy a ticket for this cheap ever again <laughs> Well, it's always exciting to see something new in, in on its feet for the first time. And I, I wish I could get down there. I just have so much stuff going on in my life, but I, I, I will be rooting for you and uh, anything, anything in the future, I'm going to try and get down to and uh, see your stuff. Cause like I said, at the beginning, it was always my goal to, you know, help promote new shows and see them get to the next level. And you we have so appreciate that. that. Thank you. No. Yeah. It's so awesome. Thank you so much. Not a problem. So we have been speaking with Nicolette, Rachel, and Lindell, the creative team, the, the people who helped bring Savage the Musical to the stage and to life. So make sure you to check out our social media and go to savagethemusical.com to get your tickets or just learn more about the show in general and hear it and learn more about this incredible story because I've heard it before and it's still incredible. So congratulations to you all. Tune in next week as we'll be speaking with another guest or guest about their life, love, and passion that is musical theater. I am your host as always, Jean-Paul Yovanoff. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you. <laughs>